I love Eddie's background image. I know that's <laughs> not where you're sitting, but wouldn't it be cool if it was? Probably <laughs> a lot of background noise, though. Much if it was. <laughs> <laughs> and probably probably be very cold, in fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to have uh, everybody here. You can see that we have, um, this is kind of a, a stop and, and restart of this community. Um, so the minutes are in the chat. And if you could add yourself, that would be great. I don't have a prompt question for today, um, but just adding yourself to the minutes is always super helpful. Um, I know that some folks that um, like James and Anessa had expressed interest in joining, I think with the move time that, you know, how sometimes when you have a new event on your calendar, <laughs> it takes a little bit of time for other events to kind of come to an end so that you can join. <laughs> other meetings. So uh, I, we will have others on this call as well as we move forward. So um, Sean, who are you and why are you here? Well, I thought I was proposing a prompt question. I just impromptu thought, well, the prompt without a prompt, I'll just propose future prompt questions. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, in, I uh, think maybe, yeah, we can do that in this welcoming new members right here. Yeah, that's uh, so um that's, of course, from Ross Perot's vice presidential candidate's debate opening line from years ago. He's yeah. some kind of Navy admiral. And um, his first thing, first thing he said introducing himself was, who am I and why am I here? <laughs> I <don't know laughs> kind of set, set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to have everybody here. Um, maybe on that, we could just kind of say, you know, hello, just introduce ourselves. I know that a lot of people know a lot of people on this call, but nonetheless, uh, it just might be nice. So I'll start. I'm Matt German Prey. I'm a professor at the University of Nebraska Omaha uh, in the College of Information Science and Technology and one of the founders of the Chaos Project and current board member. So uh, Dan, you want to go? You're next on my on my list. Um, sure. I'm uh, I'm Dan Katz, uh, chief scientist at uh, National Center for Supercomputing Applications, NCSA, at University of Illinois. Uh, I'll be uh, actually driving through uh, Lincoln on Sunday, but not not Omaha. Sorry. Um, How is that possible? Because <laughs> I'm going to Champaign. I'll be cutting down. So. Okay. <laughs> they're just so they're so tightly connected. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, I guess I'm, uh, I'm here because of a kind of a general interest in open source software and universities and in particular because of a project with Greg and, and Andy um, from DOE that's where, where scorecards and, and metrics are going to be important. Okay, thanks for being here, Dan. Uh, Sean, you want to go? Yeah, hi, I'm Sean Goggins. Um, my interest is I've, I've been working with uh, Risa and I had some conversation with Dan and done some workshops. Um, with Risa in the past and uh, worked with CZI. So just a longstanding interest in open source scientific and research software. So I'm, I'm glad to see a group that is also interested in these things. Cool. Sorry, can I maybe just to jump back in for a second? Sorry, I'm, um, so I'm also the steering committee chair of Risa, which is the Research Software Alliance for folks that don't know that, I guess, uh, uh, since Sean was mentioning it. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Greg, you're next on my list. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Greg Watson. I'm group leader of application engineering at Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, so I'm also PI of one of the seven um, sub projects of the Next Generation Scientific Software Technology Project uh, from DOE. And part of what we want to be able to do is um, understand the sustainability issues around scientific software. Um, and so uh, we're, we're actively trying to create a an effort to develop metrics um, and some kind of scorecards, uh, you know, that allow us to be able to sort of get a picture of the sustainability efforts of, of these projects. Um, and uh, I mean, in my investigation, I discovered chaos. Um, I know there's some other uh, efforts going on. In fact, I just discovered another uh, workshop called Metrics, um, which uh, I'd never heard of, but was was on uh, was on the weekend. Uh, I was at Supercomputing, 
Um, but uh, on, on last weekend, there was a, a workshop on this kind of area. So there's obviously a lot of people that are interested. There's the Open SSF uh, organization as well. So really, um, uh, what I'm trying to do is, is, you know, create some kind of set of metrics that we can use, but also I see a great opportunity for a broad community uh, sort of uh, to coalesce around this. And I know you guys, uh, Chaos, already have a community and you work in, you know, you've been doing it for a long time, but it seems like there's a lot of people out, you know, in other in other forums as well that are also interested in this that don't seem to be working together. So it seems like there's a great opportunity, you know, for a much broader coalition. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. That's a good intro. Uh, Don, you're on my... <laughs> yeah. so I, am, I am Don Foster. I am a director of data science for the Chaos Project. Um, I'm also on the governing board and I'm a maintainer for some stuff. Um, I'm based in the UK. I'm on the board of UK. I do some stuff with the CNCF. And so I dabble in lots of things. My experience has been broadly around um, open source program offices. So I spent some time working at VMware and Intel and other other big companies before doing this, this data science thing. Um, I also have a PhD where I studied the Linux kernel, if anyone cares about that. That's that's me. Thank you, Don. Um, I'm not going to do well with this name. Ifihana Bara, if you are able to introduce yourself, that would be great. It's also okay if you're not in the spot. All right, uh, Elizabeth, you are up. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager. I live in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and I have been in open source a very long time. And I come from um, companies like Pivotal, GitHub, um, SourceForge, if anybody remembers those, that group. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about chaos at all, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I am happy to point you in the right direction if I can, or I can find somebody who knows the answer if I don't. So great to see everybody here. Thanks, Elizabeth and Addie. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Addie Malvia Tucker. I'm the group leader for software engineering at Oak Ridge National Lab, uh, working closely with uh, Dan and Greg on their um, course or project. Um, very interested in scientific software matrix, open source matrix that we could help to make both the, you know, our projects as part of our initiative, but both projects at ORNL also more sustainable. Great. Well, thanks, Sean. Does that fulfill the who are you and why are you here? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. <laughs> um. Right on. <laughs> um, so I, I thought maybe we could take some some time here. Um, and I, I know maybe we've talked about some of this in the past, but I just, to your point, Greg, about community, um, I think it would be great to talk about the things that we do in the Chaos Project. Um, and the reason for this is like things that this working group can lean into as ways to think about metrics. So more than honestly, sometimes just building metrics themselves. Um, but the ways that you can kind of share these ideas, that we can build community, um, these are things that we've been doing for a long time. And I just wanted to, I hate to use the word resources, but because <laughs> there's people involved, but this is the kind of things that are available um, to think about. So um, one of the things that we do do is that we do have chaos cons regularly. So they're twice a year. Um, in fact, it the chaos con in Bosdem in Brussels, Anessa, Pawson, who is on, who is, um, she works at NumPy, uh, is going to be one of the speakers with respect to building community in the scientific software sense and how metrics can and cannot be helpful sometimes in that regard. Um, so the ChaosCon, we typically always run it with FOSDEM, which is coming up February 1st in Brussels. And then we try to run one that's more located in the US. Uh, we always kind of struggle with this because a lot of conferences that we, we try to align with sometimes shift their dates. And we don't like to have two chaos cons within maybe two or three months of each other. But nonetheless, these are conferences that um, you can participate in. These are conferences that we have breakout rooms. These are just opportunities for you to 
think about kind of um, all of the things that you would like to do and build community. So please think think of conferences um, as a way to, to talk. Um, data science. So uh, we do, as Don pointed out, we have just really started our data science efforts here in the chaos project. One of the things, and I'll I'll turn it over to Don here in just a second. One of the things that um, that we have been doing in the chaos project for a while has been kind of agnostic on the metrics that we produce. So, for example, if we have a metric that is focused on, uh, say, contributor health, we basically kind of prior said, here's a metric that may or may not be useful to you. <laughs> you use it, you figure it out um, in your context because it's so difficult for us to be context specific. Um, through funding from Sloan, uh, we're able to, to build up our data science efforts that's that are meant to extend that so that we can not only just say, here are the metrics that are useful for you, but here are ways that you can think about those metrics in practice. So Don, do you wanna talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because what, what we found is that that agnostic approach um, tends not to work particularly well for, for a lot of people because the, the metrics can be, um, you know, on the one hand, we can't tell them exactly how to interpret the metrics for their specific context or their specific project. But on the other hand, um, there are some things that we can tell them about what to think about when it comes to interpreting metrics because people tend to get overwhelmed. It's a, it's a lot of data. It's potentially a lot of metrics. And they just need some help navigating that. So in addition to the, the metrics models that we've been putting together, which are collections of metrics to help people understand a particular concept around their project or community, um, the data science effort is really focused on helping people understand how to interpret those metrics so that they can spot trends, um, diagnose what's going on in their community, and then use what they've what they found to make some tangible improvements. So the data science efforts are roughly focused on helping people navigate that space. Thanks, Don. Um, yeah, on those, those, I'll stop on those two conferences and data science. They're not, you know, I, this list was very random the way I put it together. But <laughs> do, do people have questions maybe on on conferences or the data science efforts or kind of reactions to these? There's available like resources, again, I hate that word in this situation, but things that, that we bring as, as a chaos community. Eddie, Greg, Dan. Well, I, I mean, the data science certainly sounds like it would be useful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all very well to have a set of metrics, but to be able to understand them, I think is, is key. Um, so, I think we'd we'd certainly be interested in that aspect of it. I hadn't really thought about that so much. I, we've really been just focused on like what the metrics are, you know, in the first place, um, and then how maybe people can kind of access those metrics and you know see what they are. Um, but we haven't really got into yeah. Well, okay, now now we've got all these metrics. You know, how can we actually use them? Um, and so, so yeah, your experience in that area, I think, would be very useful. And if we can help with that effort too, I think, uh, you know, we we have resources, um, you know, that we can also bring to bear on this. So, and and the, this whole this whole effort, this NGSST, has, uh, you know, it has seven different organisations uh, that comprise it, and those other organisations are also are very interested in this space. And I think we could probably get contributions from them as well. So, so I think there's a lot of resources that we can bring to bear on it. Um, uh, yeah, so that probably sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be great. Um, and I'm I'm always happy to sit down with people if you want want to just kind of walk me through your metrics and get get some thoughts. I'm happy to I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to sit down with just about anybody and talk about talk about metrics. It's kind of kind of what I love to do. Um, and then we do have a data science working group that um, was meeting every other week. We spun it down briefly because it conflicted with all of the big conferences and so people just weren't available. But we're going to do one. We'll do one the first week of December before we take our uh, Christmas uh, chaos meeting break. And then we'll spin those back up in, in earnest in, in January. 
And then we do have a working group data science uh, Slack channel uh, where people can participate as well. So we, yeah, we'd love to have you and your team engaged more in that. We, we don't really have anything at the moment. Like we're actually literally starting from zero. Um, you know, there are a few, there's been a few attempts at creating um, sort of uh, metrics in this space uh, that we're, we're looking at, but we really don't have anything. So we, you know, part of the reason I want to get involved with chaos was to, to kind of understand how to move forward on this, you know, in creating metrics and metric models. Um, and, you know, I'd like to bring other people in as well, who, you know, the, the actual like people working on the projects, uh, you know, and in, in the scientific computing spaces who, have a better understanding of, you know, what it means for their project to be sustainable or, you know, what it means for their their community to be active and so forth. Uh, so that we can we can understand, you know, what the metrics are in the first place. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, really we're starting from zero pretty much. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not quite sure how to move forward other than just to kind of sit down and start deciding what metrics we might be interested in. Yeah, and we do have we do have a what we call the starter project health metrics model, which uh, we're thinking about renaming to something something else, but it's um, it's four simple metrics that uh, are a good way to start to analyze um, like individual project repositories. So that might be that might be a good place uh, to start. I don't know if we can drop that link into the into the minutes. Um, I, I can think what, what would be good, yeah, if you do have like some some initial metrics and and a tool or something that uh, I know you do have some uh, some software available, you know, some infrastructure available. But you know, if we could start collecting something and just see what it looks like, I think would also be a good starting point, right? Mm -hmm. To get a feel for the sort of things that we we might you know, it might be worth looking at. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very practical person. You know, I like to, I like to just start doing stuff. Um, some people like to talk about things for, you know, for a long time and, and try and, you know, uh, uh, figure out everything beforehand. But I think I'd like to see, you know, us start trying to collect stuff and, and just see where that takes us. We can do that. So, <laughs> yeah. So I have to, I've okay. added that link to the minutes for the starter okay. health. Thank you. Sorry, I was just looking it up. So a, a few comments, Greg. So points well taken. We see um, a lot of people that have a lot of metrics in front of them and don't know what to do with them. So we've run into many, many, many scenarios where people have dashboards or data in front of them, and they just it. that's just the end of it. <laughs> they just stop looking at them because it's too much. So part of what we do is try to filter through that. Um, the second is uh, one of our unofficial like mottos within the chaos project is helping people move off zero. So that's that's also a point <laughs> taken. <laughs> um, and then maybe the third point, Hattie, I definitely see your hand there. Um, and then maybe the third point as well um, is that that with this this starter project health metric model that Don had alluded to. Um, this is something that she's actually worked with, that Dawn has actually worked with other communities on to kind of put together a, a report around that, that the results that come from that and just kind of commentary on how that could move forward. So that's perhaps something that could be on the table. And it was actually with, um, I think it was with Melissa who participated in this group as well to take a look at some of the communities um, that she had an interest in. So if, if you're like focused on, if you like doing things, that, that could be possibly something that we do. Yeah, if there's a particular repository or two that you're particularly interested in, um, you could talk to me about that and we could we could add them to to Augur, which is which is Sean's tool, and run the starter project health metrics model on just a couple of repositories and give you a feel for what it looks like. We actually for, have for your particular projects. Yeah, we have their data. Let's I'll let Addie answer. Um I put some notes in there about where they can look at it, but I think doing the starter health metric model, which is not available in our publicly hosted instances of Augur and 8.0 would be really helpful. Yeah, Addie. 
Um, my question is slightly different. So I know we're restarting the, the science call. So I was wondering that in the previous versions of when we did this, did we come across any matrix that were particularly found useful by other scientific software projects or yes. research software projects? And do we have them somewhere so we could go and sort of say like, okay, these were the matrix that were found useful or helpful by the other research projects? Um, hold that thought. We don't, we have some metrics um, and it's actually this other tab that I have here, which is how we've thought about science so far. And so just as a, as kind of a framing, a way to, to get us to metrics. So um, we do follow an approach called the goal question metric approach. So it's not putting metrics first, because we have found over the years that if you just start picking metrics, like just, you, you need to understand like what they're actually trying, what the metric is actually trying to accomplish. Um, and so kind of working down from the goals down to the questions to the particular metric that can answer the questions and support the goal is a much more systematic and better approach than just saying that like the number of new contributors is the metric we need. It's it's important to kind of frame that, met which could be a great metric, but it's important to frame that metric against a goal that you're trying to accomplish. And yes, we do have that, Addie. So, or at so least start mean, towards that. Yep. Yeah, and I completely agree. I was more, more or less thinking of like other case studies where, you know, we kind of see what their goal was, what metric they ended up with. That's very helpful because uh, we have many projects and probably they will have varied goals. Yep. So it would be good for us to, if there were any case studies, just read through them. It helps to sort of think in the direction of where, how we could approach it for our projects maybe. Perfect. And in fact, all of your questions and comments, Addie and Greg, they're very timely because the development of case studies is something that we're doing in 2024. So to actually highlight particular projects that are using the metrics and how the metrics help them uh, drive decisions within their community. So you're you're right on target. And, and if we um, need to develop some case studies around communities like whether it's with the starter project health metric models or whatever it may be, that is something that we're definitely doing in 2024 as well. So I, I'd put that in there. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, today I have a conflict at 10 30. Uh, usually I have a conflict in that spot. So I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to drop off. That's but okay. Up with yeah. the Greg and Dan. Yeah, it's great having you here and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, Matt, yeah. I just wanted to sort of follow on uh, from what Addie was saying. So another aspect that we're interested in is is the is the research that's that sits behind the metric models, right? Because and I, I I'm sure you've done some, but uh, we are we're interested to know, um, you know, whether these models actually give you useful information, you know, and and. Uh, if there if there hasn't been any research into that, then we're 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 a research organisation, you know. So we we are interested in actually trying to figure out whether these metrics and metric models actually provide information that accurately reflects the, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to understand about the projects. Um, so that was that was one thing I wanted to mention. The other is that we have about, I would say, two hundred and fifty projects, something like that, um, that we're interested in collecting metrics for. And that's just within the ECP community. But, you know, Dan is involved in, in the general research software community as well. And there's probably many, many more projects that, you know, we could, we could uh, start collecting metrics for. Um, but uh, so there's, there's quite a lot, <laughs> I guess was my point. Yep. Points well taken. Um, Dan, did you have a comment on that or a new comment? Yeah, well, I, I was just going to add that um, in, in, in some sense we're, we're Greg and Addie and I are, are doing this for this DOE project with, I don't know, 70 or 100 or whatever uh, uh, individual open source projects that are part of that. But then there's also, um, uh, there's an NSF funded project that I have a proposal and that would be doing this similarly for another, I don't know, 100, 200 um, open source projects if we happen to get selected. So. Um, so, there's, so there's a lot of potential usage if we can figure out something useful. That sounds good. Um, so, Dan, this is a these are proposals that are currently under review. Is that right? 
Well, the one the one with Greg was has was decided a couple of weeks ago or so, and so it's uh, so we're just waiting for funding, and I guess we're now waiting for the president to sign the budget, so Department of Energy gets some money, and then they can give us some of it. Okay. Uh, the NSF one is under is under review, and we probably won't know for another three months or so. Okay, um, fair enough. Um, to your to your point, to Greg, in terms of the research behind these, yes. Oftentimes there is research behind the specific metrics that we talk about. Um, so we have come across published papers in a variety of different disciplines that talk about usually a specific metric, um, but lots of that, uh, a lot of that research is around one or two specific metrics, just kind of in a controlled trace data setting. And so, yes, we were, we're, relying on those, but in terms of like the field work or the field study that is required to actually see these, that's, you're looking at it. This is what's occurring right now. <laughs> like this is. Right, right. I mean, and it seems like a great opportunity, right? Because we've got yeah. I don't know, in the vicinity of 200 or something projects, which we're not collecting metrics on now. So we could definitely do a baseline, like collect the metrics from them all and as, as they are now. And then, you know, in a year's time or something, we could, you know, well, obviously we're going to be monitoring it ongoing, but in a year's time we could look at, okay, what do the metrics look like now and what's the state of all the projects now? Um, and I think that would be a very interesting, you know, piece of research that we could do. Agreed. So, yeah, maybe unbeknownst to you before this meeting, you have you've basically just stepped into a large scale <laughs> field study <laughs> to, to take a look at these metrics in practice. So. Yeah. Um, particularly in this context. So like, you know, I think we have maybe a slightly better handle on that maybe in the corporate sense, just because they've been looking at these for a longer time. And that's really where Dawn had been doing a lot of her, her work. Um, so yeah, th these are great, great comments. Well, I mean, this is not just, you know, for academic purposes either. It, it's because, you know, as part of this project, uh, we we need to really understand that the metrics that we're collecting are useful, you know, and they're actually giving us viable information and that we should continue to use them or, or modify them. Or, I mean, obviously we're going to be uh, refining them over time, but it's certainly part, part of our, our remit for this project is to understand that the metrics are actually, you know, giving us useful information. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it, this yeah. is a, the thing we want to do yep and we're us too um this is that adding this is the value add component that we're that we talked about even you know a long time ago in this call so dan yeah you have a comment yeah um I, i'm sorry i wasn't sure if i was going to say this or not but i guess I, I will um so i i think it's it was interesting in the introductions that we we kind of have this um a uh, fairly divergent set of um, experiences between uh, what I would call kind of research software and and more corporate software. Um, and so I think one question, I guess, for me is how we actually use that and what we what what's kind of transferable and what's not. Um, and so I guess the reason that I was thinking about this is just in terms of what uh, what Greg was saying in terms of research is it would be potentially interesting to see if there are differences between right, between these different um, kind kinds of software in some sense in terms of metrics and how the metrics are actually used and and what value they have in in these contexts. Um, so again, another another great point. Actually, if you see my tabs across the top, I have a paper open there regarding social capital. and it's about the establishment of of capital in one area, which would be the corporate space and how you actually can bridge what you learn in one space to another. Um, and so just the relationship between the two is something that Sean and I are looking at and just how you go about doing that. Because to your point, Dan, it's, it's certainly not a one-to-one -one relationship, but there are, we think, a number of things that can translate between the two. Um, and, and understanding what the similarities and differences are is, is I think, pretty important. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was also just going to say there's, uh, and I don't remember if anybody here has been invited or not, and maybe I should think about that more. Um, we're going to be having a, uh, one of these computer science uh, dog stool workshops in April um, that's going to be looking at software engineering and research software engineering and what one can learn from the other. Um, 
So, uh, so I think yeah. that I think that'll also be interesting to see because I feel like that's in some ways I don't know. There's like there's these different overlapping things. I don't know quite what the Venn diagram looks like between uh, between open source and closed source and research software and non research software and commercial yeah. software and university software and so. Um, I, unfortunately none of these things exactly match with any of the other ones but um that is an interesting boundary that i think we've discussed before in the context of research software engineering as an emerging discipline i, I do think i do think there's something there i'd love to participate in that myself okay let me let me see what i can do the the the, the german organization that runs this kind of Docs, control yeah. the invitation process and yeah yeah no i remember Doc yeah. okay well, i think I mean, the u.s USRSE organization has over a thousand members now. So it's it's probably more than an emerging discipline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's quite a big growth since uh, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually, uh, it's, it's, I think we passed 2100 recently. So it's, it's a little bigger now as well. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we, we usually end these meetings at 10 to just to give people an opportunity to <laughs> go to their next meeting so i'll i'll just kind of continue on because i do want to get to this last this last item just in terms of other things that i that y'all can think about having access to so we do have uh folks in the chaos community who do like graphic design work so if there are things that, that you need to report back to your institutions or to your funders sometimes visuals can help a little bit or if there's ways that you want to express the work that we're doing perhaps in these case studies. Um, so just consider that as well. Uh, we do have podcasts that we want run regularly and it would probably make sense at some point in 2024 to uh, do a podcast around the issues that we're talking about here. Um, and that's something that we have, we, we run them, we invite panelists, we have them professionally edited and we share them on our, on our channels. So um, trying to improve visibility. And then I think uh, Elizabeth put in there, we do have a, a Slack channel as well for science. So we just call it WG Science. That's easy enough to find in, in the Chaos Project uh, Slack org. All right. So I, the, maybe the point here is that you're you're joining a group of people, like we we're over a thousand community members globally, and we're here to to do a lot of things to help you get to where you want to be. Um, oftentimes we look at the chaos project as a, as an open source community that helps, <laughs> like that's kind of one of our, our things to, to your point really much earlier, Greg, like moving off zero, like let's help people, you know, chart that path. We'll never get to something that's, um, fully perfect in terms of here are the metrics that will solve all your problems, but we can, we can at least move that forward positively. All right. Um, there are a few other, I think maybe the goals here, I'm going to stop on that. I think yeah, I have a few um, few ideas that I think we can put together and talk about next time. Most uh, of the stuff under goals is just me taking notes on what people were saying. Okay. Just in terms of the other organizations. Yep. Um, here are a few, it looks like there's the link to the starter project health metric model that Don had alluded to. So that mm -hmm. Whoever put that in is good. It's really meant, I think this point is, is key to kind of help or, help organizations or communities think through the many different metrics that might be in front of them to just get their bearings. And this is a model around contribution health. So understanding contribution. Um, thanks for this. So this growing organization of research and software engineers. Thanks for jotting that down. All right, so um, this is kind of to Addie's point. So this link right here is is a work that we had done prior as ways of thinking about the metrics that would be relevant in the, <laughs> the context of scientific open source software communities. And so the idea here is that like, and these can change. So these are certainly not fixed by any means, but these may be functions that you particularly care about. So community growth and decline, sustainability, un engagement within the, a larger ecosystem, and then the particular um, focus on software maintenance. So these may or may not be the functions that you all kind of have in mind. And again, these can change. 
all right? So within each one of those functions, we have a series of goals that we would try to accomplish. So the goal would be to understand um, new community member engagement or how well we're doing at supporting community activities. Sustainability is, do we have, gotcha, Dan, do we have paths to leadership? You know, how well are we achieving that goal, providing pathways to leadership or retaining con new contributors? You know, what's our, our uh, retention rate? So Dan, go ahead. Um, no, I, I, would, I guess I was just kind of curious about how these uh, these sub uh, elements were um, derived, and if they're if they're fixed, or those are also part of the discussion. Because I would have put funding under sustainability rather than this maintenance. Is all so I'm just kind of curious. The, but, this is all yeah. part of the discussion. So okay. everything everything you're looking at here is movable. Okay. So, it's, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I'd say this is this is a first stab at creating some kind of visual orientation to the space and moving things around is expected and good okay and this had come and then to your first question dan this had come with a uh, right conversation over the course of a couple months if you look at the the minutes with people who were in those meetings before so this was like james howison anessa melissa from pandas like other folks who had an interest in this space as well. So this is just the way that, and this is the group that I think will will grow here, but this is what that discussion um, stemmed from. Okay. And so does this at least make sense, at least on slide one? Yeah, Greg. Um, yeah, I, I was just gonna say that it, it make, I mean, I think this is a great uh, uh, way of sort of trying to think about it. Um, I will say that in DOE, they're moving away from using sustainability um, to stewardship um, as a term uh, because sustainability, I mean, sustainability really is the whole thing, essentially, isn't it? You're trying to create something that's sustainable, but stewardship is is more of a function of like actually trying to uh, help the projects to do whatever it is that they're, you know, continuing to do so uh, that that would be just one comment I have on that um so I think I think the point is that these high level things it's really important to understand you know what is meant by them um because these terms tend to get bandied around like sustainability and so forth uh, but you know what does that actually mean so I don't know if you have definitions somewhere or there's you drill into it in more detail and, and go into what it actually means but I think that I think that would be the first thing that people use. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I think the definitions just kind of came through the min meeting minutes on that on that document and from just trying to capture that conversation, but nothing in terms of a document that officially defines these. Um, Dan. Yeah, so uh, so Greg probably has ex uh, kind of knows where this is. I'm not completely sure I do for the minute, but there's a... Um, uh, there's a kitware uh, activity that's been looking at this that also kind of came up with four areas, um, specifically four scorecards. And it would be interesting to compare those four areas that they came up with with these four. And I think there's actually some overlap, but I'm not completely sure. I would love to see that. Who is it, Dan? Uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll find the link. Hang on a second. Okay. Great. It's, a, it's an open source uh, research software company that works with DOE and universities and DOD okay. and medicine. Uh, they they maintain CMake, I think, and okay, and Paraview and some other kind of. Yeah, I'd love to see that. No doubt. Um, can somebody look for that in the chat and get it into the minutes as well? So yeah, I'll just put it in the chat. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, more of a visual, less of a, this is not very, not meant to be deterministic. Um, so we can talk about kind of what these functions would be and then what the set of goals may be. This is also, um, there could certainly be more than two goals that address, that are kind of housed under each function. We had only just listed two for simplicity's sake, just so we're again not trying to boil the ocean. You know, we're just trying to move off zero, so to speak. Again, I'm just going to keep going back to that phrase. All right. So then the idea here is that if I was to look at, say, community growth and decline, so if I was to look at this upper left hand quadrant, 
kind of working down, we would look specifically at the goal of uh, new community member engagement. And so we would build a series of questions. So are the number of contributions increasing from new people? That would be a question that you might ask within your particular community. Um, the where to look, this should just, sorry, it's a residual. So then at that point, we have metrics and metrics models that can be used to answer that question, which contribute to that goal as part of this function. So that's kind of the structure that we do here. That's that goal question metric approach. Goal right here. The questions that help address that particular goal, and then the particular metrics that could feed into that. And so, you know, Greg, I think to your point of of trying to get to things specifically, I think we can start with the starter project health metric model just to start, start kind of start seeing what metrics could mean in front of you. But I do think there is going to be some conversation that occurs as we start to define what some of the metrics are that can achieve the goals, however we sort those out. So I'm with you. Um, I like action a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always worth it. For sure. Um, but I, I do think a framework is always helpful just for us to carry forward to our funders, to, again, our institutions, to the other communities that we might interact with. Well, I, I mean, I'm interested to know uh, in other cases where you've worked with specific communities, like how you've how you've collected the in, the information to create this, you know. So uh, I, I'm not quite sure of the right way to, to you know to 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 um, articulate it. But so I'm thinking we we really need to we've got to engage with our community, like the specific you know projects that that come within our scope um, to to try and get everyone to agree, right? In, to, in some way that this is this is a good set of uh, metrics and information. So how do you, because I know that if we presented this, even though it's got, we could say, this is just like a, a straw man, you know, it's, it's, these are just example metrics, you know, immediately people are going to say, oh yeah, but that one doesn't do what, you know, and this one, no, we don't want that one, you know, so there's, uh, so I'm just wondering, like, have you got any experience with how you just get even that started, that discussion started with them, um, so that people don't sort of start poking holes in it before you even get going? Uh, so so this would probably go back to the some of the things that we can provide in chaos. So through our um, conferences and through our longstanding discussions, um, we have circulated maybe not this, these entire, excuse me, functions at one time, um, but it's a reliance on people in the field. There is in any one of these calls or a conference, there's certainly, excuse me, <laughs> a self-selection bias that people will have who want to participate in these activities. Um, so it's really just about continuing to circulate it in the communities that are most relevant. So, I, points well taken. Um, and the, honestly, you know, part of me when I was listening to you talk, Greg, too, um, like this is just part of the community work that we will need to do as far as circulating this and getting feedback. And um, probably the hardest part about community is people. <laughs> so getting getting people aligned and together, just to, it just takes time. It'll just, it's just going to take a little bit of time for us. But, you know, I think from, from what I'm understanding, at least in the university group or the corporate OSPO group, um, there are, there do seem to be areas on models like this that people tend to agree with more quickly. So it, uh, for example, I may pick community growth and decline. Yeah, we all care about whether or not our communities are growing or in a state of decline. Like we can all kind of, there, there may be things that we all kind of agree on faster. And those are areas that we can continue to focus in on and really work those metrics out. And then some may take a little bit longer to sort out. So for example, stewardship might be a corner of this map that just takes a, a longer, a longer arc 
and a little bit more effort. Um, so I think we can work on things kind of at different paces on a model like this. You know, Don or Sean, if you have comments on that. I, mean, I think I think coming back to to one of Greg's initial points about there being this kind of diffuse space, I think that, I think this visualization is trying to get to how to talk about the relationships. But, so it's trying to get to what are the metrics, but I and models, but I think I think it's also useful for thinking about the different organizations and interests that exist around research and scientific open source software with research being the bigger umbrella, as Dan mentioned. So um, I, th we would really, I think this, this whole effort will benefit from trying to enumerate and think about where are the points of connection where we can provide, this group can provide utility across groups and perhaps create some more coherence in this space or to help other groups join a coherence that's difficult to see right now. And I think too, once you once you start, you know, looking at a model like this and deciding to to implement it, I think the the first thing uh, is to get the people involved in the projects um, actually involved in the discussions about which metrics you're going to use, um, because some will make sense for them and some some won't, and you'll have to customize it a little bit based on the based on the projects. And so I think you know when you're talking about actually you know taking this down a level and, and implementing it. Getting, getting those people involved in those projects can be incredibly valuable. Yeah, there's actually a couple of levels because, uh, you know, these projects are already organized into sort of communities themselves um, in a lot of cases. So, you know, and then, and then within that are the individual projects, you know, so there's almost another level of hierarchy there. <laughs> so, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, having having chaos as sort of like the place that everybody gets together to to try and figure these things out as sort of a neutral space, um, it, I think that is really a great benefit, you know, because there's been a lot of uh, uh, perception of bias, I suppose, you know, in ECP um about you know who makes decisions and so forth and what what the reason behind those decisions and so yeah if we have like, like a completely neutral uh place where people can just go and and you know contribute to something that's that's doesn't have any agenda behind it and all that kind of stuff i think that's got a lot of benefits <laughs> yeah dan final comment or thought yeah, uh, I, I was just thinking about the uh, when you had the the diagram up before, and uh, I think uh, community was in the middle of it. Um, and I'm just kind of actually, I don't know, wondering about kind of case studies in some sense, where where for some projects, community actually maybe isn't the important thing, but there's something else that's important. So, like one of the one of the examples you were talking about was community growth or decline, and um and and maybe having a community that's three people that's that's stable and has enough funding to do their work is is fine um yeah. so it's not really the community then that's the important part it's kind of the the project staff in some sense so and 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 this may be also the case in some of the the more corporate uh, projects also yeah right. and this this is why i think it's so important to have those conversations with with the people who are actually working in those projects because there is no one size fits all metric every every project's a little bit different and some metrics make sense for some projects and some frankly just don't and so fig figuring that out is is i think part of the art behind some of the metrics right and and so i guess the just the only uh point for me was that uh, um the, even thinking about community as the center may not always make sense and maybe project as the center makes sense where we are often projects and communities are tied but not always i yeah i think we talked about this when we first talked dan like really there's a lot more small scale projects that are critical in different pipelines and scientific and research software than we see in corporatized so i, I do see in some cases like at czi i've seen a reluctance to even use the word community or think it's important so okay no these are the points very well taken um and also on that this the model um that's it's also to your point dan not 
meant to be a maturity model at all, that every project would implement every corner of that. It's just meant to provide different paths that people may have that are relevant for their own project. So yeah, yeah no, I right. I'm 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 pretty sure I didn't say maturity either. So but no, but no, again, you didn't either. I think it's an old I think I had proposed maturity a long time ago to the corporate OSPO working group and that was shut down really quickly. <laughs> and so I, I, yeah, it's, it's me. All, it's just all me remembering he wants to own that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll just say really quickly again. I think that the question for for us is what what is the center? What's what's the thing that we're actually looking at? And is it is it really projects? Is it really communities? Is it some of both, some of the other? I, I don't know. Very fair. Yeah. Cool. All right. This is a really good conversation. I hope this is helpful, Greg, uh, Dan, and Addy. I know you're not there, but hopefully this is good and looking like a positive thing that we can move forward with. So for me, it certainly is. Yeah, so I did want to talk about sort of next steps. I know we're, we're over the, the 10 minutes before the end, uh, Mark, that you're aiming for. Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned that there are a number of other efforts, like the Open SSF people. Um, do you reach out to other people, or are you just like passive in the sense of waiting for people to come and and join? Oh, no, we reach out. We definitely yeah. are. we're very active. I participate in the Open SSF software and dashboard community, and some of the Chaos tools have the Open SSF scorecard incorporated into them. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. And but so the OpenSSF people have been talking about, you know, something more in the sustainability area rather than just security. So mm -hmm. that's where I see this like all of a sudden there's there's a mesh there between rather than it being sort of one way. Um, yeah. They they're one of the few Linux Foundation communities that have more meetings than we do. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's hard for me to get my head around everything that's happening there. But, All right. Uh, I think we are at the end. Greg, we can continue to talk about kind of what the next steps are, but I do think mm -hmm. that, you know, if you have the ability to connect with projects that may have an interest in being part of this conversation, and like this is, these are all open. These are completely open conversations and the more input that we can have, the better, because I don't have the answers and Sean doesn't have the answers and Don doesn't no. have the answers. And <laughs> like we just, no. we learn from all of you all and try to help move that forward in the best way that's, you know, best way for all of you all. Well, I think also that we we are sort of a fairly organized community ourselves, uh, you know, within this NGSST project. Yeah. And, and so I think we want to, we want to move ahead. Like we want to start thinking about metrics, thinking about this, this document that you've got um, and, and then when we come back to the next meeting, you know, in a month's time or whatever, whenever the next one is, uh, to be a little bit more organized, you know, yeah. and have, have that information. I mean, one of the things that we had done in the university working group, so these are university OSPOs, like set up, and they have their own specific set of things that they're trying to accomplish, um, was actually on that circle. You know, let's talk about this in Slack, but like actually having people think about maybe the different quadrants, the corners, you know, mm -hmm. and just how they might think about them. Is the terminology correct? Are these the proper goals? And that would be great because then we actually hear from folks that are, are thinking about these very particular issues. Yeah, well, we can certainly start working on that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, um, I'll ping you in Slack and we can just kind of keep that rolling between now and when we meet again in two weeks. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. <clears throat> All right, well, we were close to 10 minutes too, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's Bye good everyone. to see you, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye.